Hi, I just wanted to do a really quick take on Mia Mulder's recent video on the history of transphobia. Uh, it's an excellent video if people haven't seen it, but there were a couple of issues I wanted to bring up. Uh, and in specific, the central issue I wanted to bring up was her statement that I don't know why we have to keep repeating this stuff about why trans people have to keep repeating the arguments against transphobia when most of them have no substance at all. And anybody who looks can see they have no substance and they have been debunked time and time again. And I suppose the central thing to look at in relation to trans women is this idea that trans women are predators. Now, I've worked with trans people for 25 years uh, with the Gender Center in Sydney and elsewhere. Um, I've known a lot of trans people. Uh, they have been around for ages. And I'll tell you something, they use bathrooms. They haven't held it in for the last 20 years. Um, and the bathrooms they use are the ones that are appropriate to their gender. That means trans women have been using uh, women's bathrooms for 35, 40 years. Um, okay, so if that's been the case and there hasn't been a whole lot of cases of trans women um, molesting or raping women, then that argument speaks for itself. That's just been disproved. There's, it's, it's a nonsense argument. Um, it doesn't exist. Uh, in reality. It's something that's ideological, put out there to create fear. And the facts basically contradict it. The argument about uh, that's been recently advanced about trans men um, erasing lesbians is ridiculous. Basically, it's an increase in the percentage of people who identify as lesbian. And yes, there's a whole lot of <laughs> Uh, more people who identify as trans, but that includes non-binary people, trans women, trans men, and all kinds of things. And sure, in the old days, um, there were trans people who probably identified as lesbians who no longer do. And uh, they no longer do because basically they don't need to. And uh, a lot of them still have close links to the lesbian community, particularly non-binary people, non-binary mask people. There are a number of lesbians who may now identify that way. And because their partners, their sexual orientation still may be towards women, they still have close ties to the lesbian community, which in any case has included things like uh, tranny boys, and uh, boy, B-O-I, um, as identities within lesbian communities for a long time. Um, and that's ignoring the whole butch femme thing. Okay, so those are, okay, so those are the actual issues which might be addressed. I want to, at a further point, address the more complex issues of trans children and this idea that you know, irrevocable harm can be done to trans children if you allow them to have any kind of transition before they're adults. Uh, it's nonsense. It does irrevocable harm to prevent trans people, trans children, from having their gender recognized. I'll do another video later, but I wanted to go back to Mia Mulder's really excellent point of why do these arguments need to be continually made again and again? And it's because people aren't interested in the answers. People are not interested in the facts. People don't care. They want to provoke fear. They want to carry on with these arguments, even though they're nonsense. What is interesting is the way these people will, for instance, the uh, transphobic women's group who call themselves feminists. Um, I don't acknowledge them as feminists. I won't call them TERFs because I don't think what they're doing has anything to do with radical feminism. Um, and I think that's made clear when you see that these groups, the particularly vocal ones, virtually never 
address any other women's issues. They're basically anti-trans, and that's what it is. Uh, they're using feminism as an excuse. They're drawing on transphobes that have existed in feminism in the past. Um, the fact that they keep making alliances with groups like the Catholic Church and other um, right-wing Christian groups who absolutely believe in the patriarchy and absolutely believe that uh, women should be subordinate and um, <laughs> believe a whole bunch of other things who, who are anti-reproductive rights and uh, anti-women working and all the rest of that kind of stuff. The fact that they make union with those people to go against trans people makes pretty clear where they actually stand ideologically. I want to look at is why is trans such a big issue? I mean, if you're really concerned with children and harm to children, I'll tell you what one of the biggest, most harmful things towards children is, and that's uh, fundamentalist Christianity, or fundamentalism for almost any religion, but Christianity specifically in Western countries. Because you look at you know, the abuse that happens to children at the hands of fundamentalist parents. And you'd have to say, you know, there is some irrevocable damage. You look at psychologists and the uh, number of people who have had uh, to need, you know, major therapy for trauma, the trauma of being abused as children of fundamentalist Christians. And just the whole notion that, you know, fundamentalists will take children out of school so that they can propagandize their mind with rubbish and deny science. And how does this prepare any child for life in the real world. And it's important to recognize that just because they're propagandized by their parents doesn't mean any of these children are gonna end up fundamentalists. You can see that with the Westboro Baptist Church, where the kids of the leaders of the Westboro Baptist Church have come out against their fundamentalism. You know, the children don't necessarily follow in the footsteps of their parents, particularly where those footsteps are abusive. I've worked, uh, before I was doing sexual health, one of the jobs that I had was working with severely emotionally disturbed kids. And the definition of severely emotionally disturbed are kids who would probably have been put in a psychiatric institution. This is in the 70s, in the days when there actually were psychiatric institutions, before they turned them all out on the street. It wasn't an issue of some sort of uh, mental health issue. It was the severe emotional damage that had been done to them. Um, severely emotionally disturbed kids. These are kids who have been chained to beds and left to starve for years, who have not been able to develop language. These are kids who have had you know, relatives, um, uncles and fathers and so on, raped them because they had um, multiple sclerosis and were told that this was a punishment by God and therefore it's just fine to rape them. You know, this is horrific stuff we had to deal with with these poor kids. And the number of kids, probably three quarters of those children, had been victimized in some way by fundamentalist Christians. And I look at fundamentalist Christians um, and I look at, at their denial of sexuality. I've, I've listened to people who've, you know, when, when a child has come out or indicated that they might not be, you know, straight cishet and been told that by their parents at shotgun point that they would kill them if they ever saw them again. 
Uh, this is kids who are told that the universe started 6,000 years ago and that all of science is just a theory that is wrong. Um, these are kids who are not prepared at all for real life and they are, you know, put back um, decades for them to finally try and move into a system, into, into civilized society and get jobs and so on. They are so far behind, filled with so much nonsense to overcome. It, it is a huge amount of damage that is done to these kids. You know, you look at all the, the fundamentalist literature about spare the rod and spoil the child and how much physical abuse is justified by these, you know, basically cults. And it's, I'm not just talking about the culty end of Christianity. I'm talking about, you know, kind of mainline fundamentalist you know, the Bible is real, everything it says should be taken literally. These people, yeah, and there are a lot of them, and there are more and more of them. This is a real spreading contagion. And if you want to look at any agenda that is harming human beings and young people and people of all generations, really, uh, in society today, look to the Christian fundamentalists. They are the damaged ones. They are the damaging ones. They are the people who spread racism and ignorance and, uh, you know, op opposition to climate change, opposition to wearing masks for COVID. You know, th these are, these are people who are against medicine. They're against science and they are taking their children out of school, filling their brains full of rubbish. And, and turning them loose in, in society and trying to legislate this sort of stuff. These are the people who are opposing, you know, reproductive rights for women. These are the people, you know, my God, you know, if you can't see the problems of these people, then you are blind, willfully blind. And if you want to look at a problem that's doing huge damage to society and, and, as Maria Mulder mentions, a lot of these people have gone international and they're doing massive damage in Africa and Southeast Asia and that kind of stuff. They're spreading their contagion and their poison. And if you want to look at somebody with an agenda, you don't have to look any further than them. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. A quick take on Maria Mulder's uh, excellent video. Please go have a look at it. It's really good. I'm going to make a few more measured responses, but I just wanted to say something really quick. Okay, thanks. One more thing I wanted to say. Like the United States manages to run around and invade countries and go to war with people on the other side of the world and never ever have anything come back to its own home territory. These Christians and right-wing fundamentalists and other kinds of bigots seem to be attacking and attacking uh, um, trans people and basically women's reproductive rights and any other kind of um, progressive movement and seem to think that they are invulnerable because nobody attacks them on their own territory and we need to reverse that. We need to stop simply defending you know, trans rights or gay rights or women's reproductive rights and go after these fucking fundamentalists because they are the real evil and we need to do it on their own territory.